this morning, and then we'll make a cut to our top eight, work our way through the elimination rounds, and we'll be giving away to first place $5,000, 25 open series points, and an invite to our season three invitational in wonderful, beautiful, majestic New Jersey, mm -hmm. which you paid me to say. Yep. Because none of those things are true. Right? The empirically best place to live, the crucible of competitive magic. <laughs> we'll be heading back there, I think twice this year, go back for an open series, yep. legacy event later in the year. And Elvis Mystic is how we are going to start day two of competition here for Michael. Zarin with the Temple of Malady. A little scry action will be taking place. Top card will go to the bottom. We'll head back Gould's way. Part of the reason that Green Red Devotion was so popular at the Season 2 Invitational is because they had a great matchup against Obs on Aggro. Yes. A Nykthos, a Sylvan Carry added, another Elvish Mystic, and I expect a big turn next turn from Michael. Well, Natalia is just at the mercy of whatever Michael can produce next turn. Uh, now, she does have some removal spells, three main deck copies of Hero's Downfall, three main deck copies of Obs on Charm, and a Murderous Cut. But she better have him right now yep. if, if Michael has any of his big plays. Shasha Death Dealer was the play there for Zaring. Gould's draw step was a copy of Genesis Hydra. So he's got that payoff card that he's looking for. It's unsure if he's going to cast it this turn or if he's going to wait. It looks like it'll be a Corsair of Prefix this turn. Yeah, the Genesis Hydra is the only payoff card in the hand. And Michael can basically set up for one turn here. Play Corsair of Prefix, fortunately for him, finds a land on top of the deck. And next turn can produce a very large Genesis Hydra through Nykthos and all the green mana symbols he has in play. Temple of Abandon will cost two triggers, one for Corsair of Crucifix, the other for a Scry trigger from the Temple. See if Michael wants to leave that Death Mist Raptor up top. Looks like the answer is yes, and we'll head back Zaring's way. There's no immediate need for a Death Mist Raptor, but it's got to be better than the average draw step that Michael has against a deck like Obsan Aggro, where Death Mist Raptor is just a very powerful attacker and blocker. I think I'd rather have Death Mist Raptor than just a random draw. Exactly. You saw some hesitation, because it's not like Death Mist Raptor really does anything in an immediate sense, but Michael knows it's going to be good sooner or later in the game. Zarin will sacrifice a windswept teeth, search up a plains. We'll see what the follow-up will be. Perhaps an Anafenza is on the way. It'll be a Corsair of Crucifix, so we'll see the top card of her deck in just a moment. That's a copy of Dromoka's Command. Pass the turn back over to Gould, who of course will be drawing that Death Mist Raptor. We'll see what the card underneath that is in just a second. It's a Hornet Queen. That's a doozy. That's a card that Obson Aggro has a heck of a time trying to beat. So now we're going to count to see if we got nine mana. Yep. <laughs> Genesis Hydra for seven, getting a Hornet Queen. Pretty good turn here for Michael, if you can set it up. Yeah, it looks like he's got access to eight mana at this point. So if he has a land that enters the battlefield untapped that doesn't cause him to fetch or shuffle, likely good to go. Yeah, I believe the lands he has in hand are Rugged Highlands and Wooded Foothills, yeah. which is a little unfortunate. What if Foothills will cause a trigger from the Courser? We well, might have ourselves a Nykthos activation. You can also see it from Michael here, not in much of a rush as he's really under no pressure. He doesn't have to do anything this turn if he doesn't want to. He can play the Death Mist Raptor. That's easy enough. Looks like he's going to sacrifice the Wooded Foothills. Look at a basic forest. Perhaps spend the Genesis Hydra wheel in just a moment. I assume. I mean, giving up on the Hornet Queen next turn is a pretty big cost. So if Michael's sacrificing the, the Wooded Foothills here, I'm assuming it's because he just wants to generate a very large Genesis Hydra this turn. And Nykthos will be adding five. So it is certainly plus mana at this point. With those Elvish Mystics and the Sylvan Carry added. It would be for seven if he uses all of his mana. Top card is a Temple of Abandon. It right, looks like that's the route we're going. Not much of a surprise there. There is Genesis Hydra. So we'll see the top seven cards. 
seven rounds of Swiss today. And we'll find out just how good they are. Pelucranos and Xenagos appear to be the best of the bunch. Pelucranos isn't a bad constellation prize here. Although, uh, unlike Hornet Queen, if Natalia has a removal spell for Pelucranos, not a lot of damage gets done. Yep. I mean, there's still a very large Genesis Hydra. Natalia can block that for a little while with the Death Dealer. It still remains to be seen how she actually makes forward progress in the game. But this is not nearly as bad for her as the Hornet Queen coming off. Yeah, Hornet Queen is basically impossible for Robson Agro to be. Very close to unbeatable here. No copies of Bioblight in Talia's list. It's pretty close to game over. So this is still really bad, but Talia has some hope of getting out of this. But that's all predicated on her answering Pelucranos right now, because otherwise her board gets wiped. And yeah. Jamoka's fan the, is the draw, Windswept Teeth is the top card of the deck. That'll enter play there. Windswept Teeth will be sacrificed. See Sylvan Carry added on top here for Gould side. We'll see what's on top for Zaring side in just a moment as she, as she does resolve her fetch line activation. But the top card of Michael's deck there, a carry added, is no help. Nope. And he's got no gas left in the tank. If Talia has an Obson charm here for Pelucranos, she is not beat just yet, as bad as this game has gone thus far. She can get to something like Wingmate Rock, especially. Which is very, very hard for Green Red Devotion to beat. We'll see if there's a removal spell here for these two big creatures. Zarin will have to reveal the top card of her deck as well because of the course of crew fix. It's a Temple of Malady. The problem, of course, if Natalia does not have a removal spell is next turn is real bad. To say the least. And it doesn't appear there's no little spell. She, she's flipping back and forth between Dromoka's Command and Siege Rhino right now. And this is just a board where Siege Rhino is horribly outclassed. Yeah. Uh, well, the only thing that Natalia can really try to do here is set up Dromoka's Command plus Regeneration on Death Dealer and hope that Michael messes up. Sure. Which is a long shot. But casting the Siege Rhino is, that's a death sentence because her board's going to get wiped. Well, here is the Siege Rhino. She's going to gain three life, Gould will lose three life, but this looks like it's going to wind up being a really, really good turn for Michael. Carry Adam will be the draw here in just a moment, but the amount of mana that Michael can generate is fairly scary. Forest on top of the deck. And if I'm in Michael's seat, the Siege Rhino is the lowest priority of those creatures to kill. One can generate some card advantage, one can regenerate, and the other one is just numbers. And Michael's got numbers covered on the board right now. Numbers, very, very easy. Yeah. He will take a moment here to decide exactly how he wants to move through with his turn. The bath part of the deck can be pretty difficult as far as a Plukinos activation is concerned, but... He's got the ability to generate a, a boatload of mana, really start wiping the board and get in here for large attacks. We can't forget that there is a 7-7 seven, seven Genesis Hydra out there, too. Yeah. That's part of the reason that I would want to get rid of the Death Dealer as one of the priorities here, is get the regenerating blocker out of the way. There's a monstrosity activation. Death Dealer and Corsair are going to bite the dust. Rhino will be left over, but again, it is just horribly outclassed on this board. Here comes Pelucranos and the Genesis Hydra, it appears. So this is not an this is not a lethal attack. Certainly feels like it is. But it's still really bad. Yeah. 
Well, Gould's hand isn't great. I mean, Deathness Raptor is okay in his hand. The Ravaged Highlands, of course, doesn't matter all that much at this point. And the Curiad, it doesn't matter too much either. But he's got what he needs on the board. I'll play the Forest off the top of his deck. That'll trigger Courser, of course. Particularly the top card of that. It's a Temple of Abandon. That'll be the draw step next turn. So we'll head back Zaring's way. Temple of Malady the draw. Don't get to see the next card because Courser's no longer on the battlefield. It's going to take a, one heck of a combination of cards to get out of this one. Yeah, it almost has to be a removal spell to even continue to play. And uh, even in that scenario, Natalia is probably looking at a chump block next turn on one of the other large creatures. Step one's Tassiger. This is not the worst, as it allows Natalia to still leave up Dramoka's command, but Michael's creatures are just so large at this point. Cool to untap those large creatures and all that mana. Temple of Bannon is the draw. Forest on top of the deck. This will be in the draw step. We'll have some fighting. And I believe we might have Sacrifice and Enchantment. I know Corsair is a little off the screen here at this point. But Elvish Mystic and Corsair are going to bite the dust. But this is still a double chump block scenario. Yeah, I mean, this is we're going to see both those big creatures get turned sideways here yeah. in a moment. And Elvish I Mystic can even get in there, too. It's, it's gets a freebie. freebie. Yep. Well, he's got Death Miss Raptor in hand, so getting Natalia to four is actually somewhat valuable, as it means Death Miss Raptor and Elvish Mystic are also a, re a lethal combination of attackers on top of your two large creatures. There's a temple. Top card going to go to the bottom. Michael already knew what that was. It was a forest. Oh, we're going to morph the raptor. Tricky, tricky. He's got mana to spare. <laughs> that, could, that could be anything. Yeah. Zaring is going to pick up her four lands and move on to the next game. Michael Gold going to win game number one here this morning over Natalia Zaring. Green Red Devotion up a game of Rob's on aggro as we move on to the sideboards here. We get an idea of what Natalia is working with. Again, this is a pretty difficult matchup for her. Hopefully some tools over there on the board. She's, she's definitely got some good sideboard cards for the matchup, which is good for her because game one, I don't think she's bringing enough to the table to have a solid matchup here. Two copies of Self-Inflicted Wound, two Sorum Solemn Visitor, two Drowned Sorrow, a Burial and Plague. Two copies of Ultimate Price, a Bio Blight, a Weemate Rock, another copy of Dromoka's Command, and three copies of Duress. Really good stuff going on here. I think that the Dromoka's Command, the Wingmate Rock, the Bio Blight, the two copies of Ultimate Price, the two copies of Self-Inflicted Wound, and even the two copies of Sorin are all reasonable cards for her to bring in. Other side of things here for Gould. Already had a pretty positive matchup. He's got an Arc Lightning, a Hornet Nest, an Ugin the Spirit Dragon, three Nylea's Disciple, two Nissa World Waker, another copy of Hornet Queen, to go along with two Plummets, two Arbor Colossus, a Xenagos the Reveler, and a Den Protector. None of these cards are too exciting to me, except bringing in the other copy of Hornet Queen, which is a very challenging card for Natalia to beat. Uh, once you get past that, uh, the Hornet Nest is okay-ish. I think the Ugin and the Arbor Colossuses are okay options, but nothing really jumps out at me as being a great improvement for Michael in the matchup. Most of his work got done in game one. Doesn't need to change too much. Right. His, his core strategy, his, his main deck is already so good for this matchup that he's going to be a little light on powerful cards in the sideboard, and that's not too surprising. Natalia's the one playing catch-up, and not surprisingly, she's the one sideboarding in seven or eight good cards while Michael is making some kind of cosmetic changes to what's ever going on with his deck. Well, these players will shuffle up here for game number two. We will talk very quickly about the Star City Games newsletter, your source for Magic the Gathering news. It's free to sign up, and it's got some sweet things going on. Yeah, Cedric Phillips over here cultivates the content, so you get to see some highlights in terms of articles, both on the select and on the premium side. The SEG Open Match of the Week. You get exclusive deck lists and advice for some of the premium writers and an exclusive Cardboard Crack comic. It is free to sign up, and you can head over to starcitygames.com slash newsletter to get signed up right now. We get ready here for game number two. If you are just joining us this morning, of course, Cedric Phillips, Patrick Sullivan, Ken Crocker on the sideboard, along with the rest of the SCG Live crew. We are here in Indianapolis, Indiana. Join us on Twitter at SCG Live, hashtag SCG Indy. You can also tweet directly at myself, at Cedric A. Phillips, or at Patrick at Basic Mountain. 
Yesterday we had some fun talking about Magic Origins. We'll do a little bit more of that today as the new set is starting to roll out here. Yeah, we're getting some of the really cool preview cards right now. A lot of the significant storyline characters, the flip planes walkers. Cool stuff has already been coming down the pipeline. It's got to be a better name than flip planes walkers, right? Uh, I don't know. Maybe there is. Maybe they've already said what it is. I don't. I don't know. We gotta. We gotta work on that. I kind of like flip walkers, but. And we'll leave it to a punsmith to think of something unique, like Brian Brondoon or Luis Scott Vargas. I'm sure, they've got, they've got to have something in the holster. It's basically yeah. their job. Yeah, I know. This is why we need the two of you in the community. It's very true. Like this. It's very, very true. There's a new thing. We need a naming convention that's both accurate and witty. Can one of the two of you come through? Because we can't. Because this is not my skill set. No. Those cards do look sweet. We'll be going over some of those today and some of the other cards, too. We talked yesterday about the evergreen mechanics as mm -hmm. well. Just a, a little shift in philosophy taking place in the set, but it looks like a really cool set. No, I'm, I'm excited about it. One of my favorite Magic sets of all time is M10, and this is looking to be uh, pretty similar in a lot of respects. And the, whatever, the, the Planeswalkers, the Flip Planeswalkers, whatever you want to call them, they are flexing some pretty creative muscles design space-wise, so I I'm excited for this set. It's going to be the most recent set during my one Grand Prix of the year, which okay. will be standard, so I'm also staying on top of it for that purpose. Very smart. Big tournament. Azarin going to take a mulligan. We'll see if Gould likes his opening hand. I did like the removal of Landwalk. I thought about that more yesterday, mm -hmm. as it was explained, and it actually kind of makes some sense. Right. I think they want evasion keywords that's, that are a little bit more, like I said, gradation a little more off and on, like menace, the keyword we showed yesterday. Yeah. Intimidate, land walk, they have a habit of just being, you feel more like, this either works against my deck 100% of the time or 0% of the time. It sounds like Intimidate's long gone, too. Did they removing that? Uh, that was the impression I got from the article. Okay. I don't remember the language exactly. Maybe it's one of those things where it's not necessarily the keywords being retired. They're just going to use it way less frequently. But I, I think they want evasion keywords that have a bit more play to them on Every the other side of the table. Every time I think of Intimidate, I, I think about that old Blade Tusk boar. Yes. What a jerk. Always, a jerk. Hit always hitting me for three or being completely terrible in the matchup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess that does make perfect sense. Same with land, same with land walk abilities, yeah, too. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, you've had a history of playing with some large land walking creatures at common, and they either are horrendous or unbeatable. Yeah. Android Merc Diver was one such card that I played a lot with. Old Murky? Is that yeah. an Odyssey block? Onslaught. Onslaught block. Where it was either an F minus or completely unbeatable, <laughs> depending on who you're playing against. I remember that for well, Sewer Dreg, I think, was kind of the same way mm -hmm. back in Ravnica Block Limited. Five mana, three, three Swamp Walker. Had some flavor, though, in the sewer. Although I, I saw some people say, well, why isn't Hexproof retired? Because that's not interactive. And I guess the answer is, do we want to protect the person who's trying to block with creatures, or do we want to protect the person who is trying to cast Terminate? Magic's been pretty hospitable to the person trying to cast Terminate for 20 years. That's true. Let's give That's a little true. love to the person who's trying to block. <laughs> <laughs> a Temple Silence is where things will begin here for Zaring. Top card to go to the bottom as we're underway here in game number two. A Forest into an Elvish Mystic. A key start for this Devotion deck. A temple of Malady here for Zaring. Top card, we'll see where that goes. Now, Zaring with Whip of Erebos in her hand, I think that were, and I her, her, were I in her position, that would have been the first card I would have removed from my deck. Uh, Michael just doesn't kill stuff unless he's killing all of your stuff with Pelucranos. Uh, I don't think the game's going to get... It's unlikely that the game gets to a spot where Natalia's graveyard is filled with stuff because there's been a lot of trading and removal and, and Whip of Erebos gets to do its thing. A hey, forest. Well, Gould does search up here. Keep in mind the red splash in this deck, re relatively minor. Dragon Lord of Tarka, Zenigos goes to the Reveler. A few sideboard cards, but nothing major going on. You're basically a mono green deck here. 
It'll be a morph. Could be anything. Actually, in this list, it kind of could be anything. Yeah, there are multiple morphs here. Deathness Raptor, there are two copies of that. There are four copies of Radical Law Mystic. And oftentimes, you'll find one or two Den Protectors throughout the 75. There's one in the sideboard here for Ghoul. Oh, oh, that's, that's, oh. that's not good. <laughs> that's a Drowning Sorrow. The morph was a copy of Rattle Claw Mystic. I think Michael Gould had a big turn lined up. I, I, I was not sure if Drowning Sorrow was going to come in. I, it's a lot better on the play than on the draw. Yeah. And uh, it's a very hit or miss card against Green Devotion, and you just got to see one of the hits. Fortunate draw there for Gould. He did not have land number three. But he did draw to play the Courser of Crufix. Rattle Claw Mystic on top of the deck. Here's a temple. Interesting, the interesting thing here, you see Zarin's going to resolve the scry. The hero's downfall in hand, do you save that for a larger threat like a Wishwood Elemental, or do you just kind of take out, try to take out the Courser? Well, Michael has mulliganed, and you just got to two for one in with the Drown Sorrow. If there's a land on top here, I'm killing this thing. There's not. There's a Pelucranos. Here comes Corsair. The FOB is a Rattleclaw Mystic, and I think there's an Elvish Mystic joining too. Yep, so mana doesn't look to be much of a bottleneck anymore. So I suppose saving the hero's downfall for a real threat is a good idea. It's tough though. There's Siege Rhino. Yeah, I mean, after after Michael has that turn, you kind of can't use a removal spell on any of those creatures, mm -hmm. I feel like. They're all interchangeable. So at that point, you need to save it for a card that matters. Whisperwood Elemental, the top card of the deck. Looks like there's also Whisperwood Elemental entering the battlefield. And now there will be one face down from Manifest. And Dragon Lord of Tark on top of the deck. Well, Gould is a little ways away from that card. Now, Talia with Dramoka's Command in hand, which is great on the setup. Part of the problem is that Michael now has a Whisperwood Elemental face down. Mm -hmm. So she'll have to go through the sequence again. But Dramoka's Command does allow her to kill Corsair Crufix and Whisperwood Elemental right now if she wants it. There are worse, worse spots to be in. The ideal scenario would be land number five, drown and Dramoka's command. That's that, the, that'd be great. That's everything. She gets everything in that scenario, but I do not believe she has it. So here is Dramoka's command. So there'd be a fight there, a sacrifice and enchantment there. It appears. Looks like she's gonna fight the manifest creature. Okay. Now the Rhino's going to come into the red zone. And pass the turn back. Dragon Lord Tarka will be the draw. And of course, we do not get to see the top card of Gould's deck as Corsair's no longer on the battlefield. I'm interested why Natalia would decide to not fight the Whisperwood Elemental. So I think the thought process there is if you, if you say sacrifice an enchantment and fight the Wishbone Elemental, you sacrifice the Wishbone Elemental, the Corsair dies, you get a manifest from that, which is Dragon Lord Tarka down. And then, I mean, you've solved, like, part of the problem. Right. No, that makes sense. But I think it's, I think it's a tough situation either way. Yeah. You saw Pelucranos and a manifest. The Manifest is a mystery at this point. We know Gould does have a copy of Dragon Lord Tarka in hand. Yeah, I suppose at that point it's simply a question of whether or not you want to force Michael to spend his entire turn unmorphing the Whispered Elemental you know about, or give him a free 2-2, but let him go about his business. Our hero's downfall in hand here for Zaring. I think Whisperwood Elemental is starting to run away with this game, so you might just be forced to kill that. Well, the flip side is, if she takes care of Pelucranos, then she can just sit back and block with Siege Rhino for a little while. She has another one in hand, plus has a copy of 
uh, wingmate rock in hand and is just abandoned away. So you can imagine Natalia just going, all right, play a second siege round next turn. Now I got the defenses shored up. And eventually I'll be able to cast this wingmate rock rated and maybe win the game that way. Sure. I can also appreciate the instinct of just get the Whisperwood Elemental off the table, especially if you have a follow-up removal spell. Because then at that point, Michael has very little going on and you can sort of take your time deploying your resources. If Luke knows to safe to attack on this board, that's for sure. Five damage is going to be dealt. What is this? More Forcer, okay. Top card. Temple. Now we're not too far away from Dragon Lords. Yeah, th this is a huge burst for Michael this turn. Carry added is on top of the deck. That's going to get scratched to the bottom pretty quickly. We'll see what the top card is now. I mean, he's going to seven mana next turn. He's yep. got four lands in play, and he has a carry added as a follow up. Sometimes it really feels like Dragon Lord Tarkus should cost eight. We just got, it gets there so fast. I don't know. The, the history of two color seven mana dragons and constructed is not a, it is not flush with success. Oh, fair enough. Here comes the Rhino. Gold going to go down to nine. Is Dragon Lord Atarka excessive? Yeah, there's an argument. But I'd rather them shoot a little too high with some of the dragons than not high enough. I mean, it's certainly priced to shine. Yeah. Seven man eight eight with text. No joke. We played in a lot of we played a lot of sets where the theme was dragons and the most the most powerful card in the set was something that was really good at countering or killing dragons. Sure. <laughs> I like doing it the other way. Most powerful card was like a counter spell per yeah. se. Mana drain. Yeah. <laughs> something that's really good against nickel bolus. Yeah. Here is another siege rhino. And a passing of the turn. What if Foothills the draw Elvish Mystic on top of the deck? But seven mana has been accomplished here. Gould gonna play Wooded Foothills, gain a life, go up to seven. Gonna stay at seven, of course, because there's a course around the battlefield. We have Forest or a Mountain. Doesn't seem to matter too much at this point since it's already got one red source of mana. Oh, there's a set. There's this really sweet new card type called Legends. They're like unique storyline characters. You get to put, you can only have one in play. Okay, I'm with oh, you. Oh, cool. What's the most powerful card in the set that interacts with Legends? Caracas. Yep. All right, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you, get to, you get to keep casting your Legend. What's the right, problem? You, get, you, just get, you just get to keep casting Savitri Scars of whatever. Here is Dragon Lord Tarka taking care of a Siege Rhino. Lucranos will be coming in. The old army might be coming in here. We'll see. It's just going to be that and Rattleclaw Mystic. An attack for seven. Going to bring Zaring down to six. And you can just really see how this matchup plays out a lot of the time. It's going to take a really, really good draw from Natalia and her obs on aggro deck to ever beat this deck. Part of the problem, you just look at up and down this roster of creatures. Fleece Main, Lion, Rakshasa, Death Dealer, and Offense of the Foremost, Corso, Crufix, even Siege Rhino. These are the kind of threats that Green Devotion just chews up because yeah. they're a little slow and the deck is so effective at locking up the ground very quickly that unless you have Wingmate Rock or just a lot of removal, you're not going to be able to muster much offense. Obs on Charm takes care of Dragon Lord Tarka, as that is certainly a necessity, or this game ends immediately. What's even telling to me is just, I, I look at the numbers on the cards, it's just Seedron is a 4-5 versus Plukernos, which is a 5-5. Five five. Yeah, there, there's a lot of that going on in this yeah. matchup. Fleece Main Lion, 3-3, three, three, Corsair Crew Fix, 2-4. Two, 2-4. Four. Two, four. Just the numbers don't even line up particularly well for Obs on Aggro.
And Zaring trying to figure out if perhaps she can attack here, but that seems unlikely. I mean, uh, I mean, there is a one murderous cut floating in the deck list. Murderous cut on Pelucranos would give her a chance. And Natalia's start was was awesome here. I mean, she had a turn three drown on the play against an opponent who went turn one Mystic, turn two Morph. Has drawn multiple Siege Rhinos. Ubs on Charm, Heroes Downfall, Dramoka's Command. You can't ask for much more out of the draw here. But every significant card Michael plays demands a removal spell immediately. And while it's in play, Natalia can't really attack or block. It's been the same story in both games. Well, it's not a murderous cut. It's a copy of Tassiger. She'll have to take one to cast it. She's going to go down to five. Pass the turn back. Looking to play a little bit of defense. Pelucranos can't go too crazy on this board. No Nykthos hanging out. Carry out of the draw. Oh, boy. Hornet Queen on top of the deck. Yep. Another card that's almost incidental for Michael in terms of what he's trying to accomplish. But when it shows up, it's very hard for Natalia to win. Here comes Pelucranos. A double block looks to be taking place. There can be a monstrous activation for three here. Ladies and gentlemen, there are 15 minutes remaining to sign up for today's modern 5K premiere. Thank you. There is currently no line. Once again, there are 15 minutes remaining to sign up for today's modern 5K premiere IQ. So Plukernos will get a little bit bigger. We'll get a little bit of fight action here on Tassiger. Yep, so both creatures will die. Pass that turn back. The interesting thing here is that if Zarian is able to find a card like Drown and Sorrow, can really actually slow down Michael? Yeah, she would have to wait for him to play the Hornet Queen. Mm -hmm. Here's another Siege Rhino. It's 8-4. to four. There are two Drown Sorrows in the sideboard here. Yeah, at, the, at this point, Natalia's Drown Sorrow is a live out. A very good chance she wins the game if she's able to find it here. Mm -hmm. But it's got to be now, basically. Here's Queen Bee, four insects on the way. I think she also has self-inflicted wound in hand, so if she happens to top deck her, se her second self-inflicted wound, she just wins by burnout. Yeah, so there are some backdoor outs here. Yeah. What's interesting in this spot is if Natalia attacks with the Siege Rhino, Michael is obligated to overblock because if Natalia has one removal spell, let's say, and you block with a single Death Touch creature, you die because of the way trample damage works. So. Michael might feel compelled to block with a lot of stuff to make sure the Siege Rhino dies and Michael survives combat. And if Michael overblocks with too many flyers, then the Wingmate Rock that's in Natalia's hand becomes a live threat. So there are some roundabout ways to maybe try to steal this one. I, I think the first order of business is just attack. Put the ball in Michael's court. There's a very good chance he just overblocks. The problem is he has a reasonably safe overblock of Sylvan Caryatid plus two or possibly three Hornets. Yeah, the, the block that I had in my head was Caryatid plus Courser. It's also really, really safe. Because if a hero's downfall hits the Courser, you trample over for one point of damage. Yep. You have to kill the Caryatid. Although you're not killing the Siege Rhino. Is yeah, the problem. Absolutely. You, you might be stuck in the same block the yep. next turn. Assuming that Michael, part of Michael's priority here is to kill the Siege Rhino. Um, I mean, he could he could tender the same block you just suggested with one Hornet mixed in. Sure. And then he's really cushioned against trample damage in the event that Natalia has a removal spell for one of the Hornets. Well, you see the way that Michael has reached for his creatures. He certainly has some interest in blocking and making sure the trample damage does not occur. Yeah, and I, I love this block from Michael because... He identified the priority of the situation, which is just make sure one removal spell doesn't clobber you. And you also get to kill the rhino. Exactly. Yep. 
I mean, if Natalia does have one removal spell in that scenario, she does get to kill the, the queen and the siege rhino stays around. But Michael doesn't really care too much about that. So there's a triple block. Of course, we have Krufix, Hornet Queen, and Sylvan Curry added. So she'll have to organize blockers and deal damage accordingly. She gets to kill one creature here. And I think that she needs to kill the Corsair of Krufix because at this point, one of her outs is drawing the other copy of Self-Inflicted Wound, and Michael going from four to five is a huge deal. Of course, her Krufix does bite the dust. Yeah, very, very sharp there from Talia. There's a Manic Influence. Here's Wingmate Rock that has been raided, so a token will be joining. And then Zarin will pass the turn back with some very minimal outs here in this situation, but they do exist. Drown and Sorrow is an out paired with Self-Inflicted Wound. Yep. The second Self-Inflicted Wound is an out. We know Genesis Hydra is the draw. And it can be a Hydra for six here if Michael wants to use all the mana. I mean, this is a scary spot if you're Michael, because you know Natalia's got some outs. Yeah, it's unlikely to find a card like and Hostilities in the Obzon Aggro deck list. I don't think you have to worry about that, but given the cards that you've seen thus far, I, I wouldn't be feeling comfortable if I was Michael. I, no. I, I certainly feel like I'm in a winning position, but this game could slip away from me somehow. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, Natalia's deck has some elements that suggest that a sweeper could be there. Time to attack. We'll see with how many. Looks like just Hornet Queen and Insect. And by having to kind of diversify the attacks here to play a little offense, a little defense, that gives more draw steps. Yeah. It, it's possible this, the way this plays out is this how he gets an extra draw step out of all this. Carry added. Now perhaps the Hornet Nest. I'm just going to pass back. Big draws are available. Looks like it may have been a hero's downfall. See a little bit of reorganizing the mana here. And that other self-inflicted wound does just get the job done straight up, and Drown and Sorrow is a great draw, too. Now, the big question here is, has Michael set himself up for a lethal attack, assuming Natalia has nothing this turn? It's a whip of Erebos. That can start like a little siege yeah. rhino party. Here's an attack. There's a trigger gain of life. Blocking does have to take place here. And now Self-Inflicted Wound is definitely out because she has a Siege Rhino in the graveyard. She gains a lot of life this turn, so it's unrealistic for Michael to crack back for yep. lethal. She, gets, she picks up eight life this turn, two from the trigger, and then six from lifelink. Downfall is last card in hand. If there are the blocks. But given that Michael didn't play the Genesis Hydra last turn, he kind of has to play it this turn now because otherwise it's going to take him far too long to kill Natalia, given that she's got a Siege Rhino in the graveyard. And because she has two Siege Rhinos in the graveyard, and that represents lethal over the course of two turns, he's got to get something going now. Temple abandoned the draw. And this is potentially really bad news, because if Michael does not find a big play off of Genesis Hydra, Natalia's hero's downfall takes care of the Genesis Hydra. And his clock is pretty slow. I mean, Natalia's at 13 life. She gets to gain life periodically with the Siege Rhino she's bringing back. Michael just needs to dial this up for as much as possible and hope to win the game next turn, essentially. Well, I'm not convinced Michael's getting a next turn. No, there's no guarantee. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's at four right now. You just whip back a Siege Rhino, put him down to one, and then cast self inflicted when the game ends. I, I believe last card is, Siege, uh, is downfall. Okay. I do not believe Natalia currently has it rolled up. If it's self-inflicted wound, yeah, there's nothing to be done. Triangle Tarka. All right, well, 
<laughs> now it's this turn. Now it's this turn. Yep. Yeah, last card is Hero's Downfall. So self-inflicted wound is a winning draw step. Yep. Yeah, and Michael's got to put the pedal to the metal here a little bit, I would think. I mean, you're playing its ops on aggro. There's really no haste creatures. You know, obviously Whip is going to bring back something that does have haste, but Dragon Lord Tarka kind of checks whatever that's going to be. Yeah. Michael just goes block with Dragon Lord Tarka and Genesis Hydra. Yeah. It, you know, the, the attack does not matter for very much. But I do want to try to get this game over with if I'm cool. No, no extra draw steps. Yeah. Zarin gets one more. I suppose you can split it up like this a little bit because Dragon Lord Tarka hits so hard. So does Genesis Hydra. But Hero's Downfall can kind of gum up the math a little bit too. I, I don't know if that's true though. Uh, Natalia gains so much life getting back a Siege Rhino. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I mean, it, it's worth seven. If she were to go get back a Siege Rhino and downfall one of your big plays, then you're playing yet another turn. See, Rhino was the draw step. So if a if Zarin whips back a Siege Rhino and attacks, we're looking at plus seven life, up to seventeen. Michael's got that covered. Yeah, on the he's way got back. that covered. But if she drew a land, downfall plus whip back a Rhino would give her another turn, and then she has another Siege Rhino in the graveyard for lethal the following turn. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think Natalia can get out of this now. There's just too much going on here. But this game suddenly got kind of hairy here. Up here's Siege Rhino. Zarin going to go up to 13, Ghoul down to 1, pass the turn back. Now, actually, Natalia may be able to block out of this turn. He blocked the Genesis Hydra, right? Yeah. And so how much damage is in the air here? We have 12 coming through in the air. So Michael needs to attack some amount on the ground. He gains four and blocks the Genesis Hydra, and I don't think there's five points of damage coming across through the other creatures on the ground. I don't think so either. I think Natalia's going to get this one. By actually casting the Rhino instead of right. whipping back a Rhino. Because by casting a Rhino, it actually just checks the Genesis Hydra it's for the, the turn. The whole ground's locked up now, yeah. effectively. There's no attack. And because Michael under-attacked last turn with that Hornet, he doesn't have 12 points of damage in the air. And again, Lethal is waiting. That Siege Rhino's in the graveyard. That's going to kill him next mm -hmm. turn. Ooh, very uh, this is having a, a, a much more pronounced, pronounced effect on this game than I thought it would. Yeah. I mean, this has this is been a pretty weird spot here, but multiple Siege Rhinos have died. Gating life has been really relevant to give Natalia a bunch of extra draw steps. Yeah, yeah Michael has no choice but to attack with everything. There's an immediate block. Immediate block. Not, no question here what Natalia's plan was. So 15 damage gets through, but Natalia gains four life up to 17. 17 minus 15, and of course, is two. There was the one turn that Michael held back on the Genesis Hydra, though that was justifiable because at the time he was worried about end hostilities. Mm -hmm. There was a couple turns where I think he attacked too conservatively just because he felt like he had the wiggle room to do that, and now we're going to game three. Well, we certainly are, and Natalia Zaring is going to wow. win game number two here over Michael Gould. Abzan Agro and Green Devotion are going to get ready for a third one here. That was incredible. I, I, I thought Natalia was dead to rights a couple times in that game. Well, that's why you don't concede. That's why you play every turn. Yep. Pretty incredible, actually. That is a surprise. That is a surprising yeah, result. Yeah, that, that that was. I'm a little blown away by that. Jeez. Really impressive. Involving uh, involving the card that I pointed to initially as being the card I would have immediately cut were I in Talia C, the Whip of Erebos. Typically not good in a matchup where Michael's not really playing removal spells or trading very much, but uh, Natalia had a very odd game there being able to chump block a bunch of Siege Rhinos. Essentially burned Michael out from 20. These players are going to shuffle up very quickly for game number three, so we'll make this quick. If you haven't seen Ali Antrazi's token, you're about to see it right now from his Season 2 Invitational win. It is, of course, him as a 4-4 Flying Angel with his son, Aiden. Congratulations to Leon Trazi, well-deserving champion with Tron.
our first ever modern main event invitational. He'll be playing in the Players' Championship as a result. $10,000 richer, and of course, this awesome token. So congratulations yet again to Ali Antrazi, our Season 2 Invitational Champion. Look forward to seeing him at the end of the year in Roanoke, Virginia at the Star City Game Center for our Players' Championship. Game number three now is what we're getting ready for here between Gould and Zaring. And as you can see the clock, there is not a lot of time left to do it. This matchup isn't the fastest. Both these decks do require a little bit of setup with temples and fetching and shuffling and all that stuff. So we might be on our way for a draw here. We'll see. But Zarin able to win a game in this matchup, and it really felt like she was dead to rights many times there in game, in game number two. Excuse me. Pretty impressive. Yeah, that was, that was pretty crazy. But that's why it's so important to, to actually sit down and do the math on a lot of these turns because... Michael made a variety of tacks over the course of that game that were, okay, this feels pretty safe, and I'm going to leave an extra creature block back just in case. You, you sort of got that sense on a lot of his attacks where he left an additional creature back, erring very much on the side of caution because his position felt so commanding that he could afford to play around cards he probably couldn't even imagine. Just all right, maybe there's an extra random removal spell here hanging out, and I'll leave an extra creature back on defense. All of those attacks amounted to probably two extra turns over the course of that game that Natalia got, and she was able to cobble together lethal through the Whip of Erebos, chump blocking, and getting back to the So there's a lesson there in that game. Don't just assume that you have the game locked up and you can play extremely conservative in spots like that. You have to sit down and do the math because Michael left himself a point short, and now we're going to game three. And that conservative play may have cost Michael this entire match. Yeah. We'll see how things do break down. It's going to be a Forest and Elvis Mystic here to start things off with about three minutes left to go. Zari will take a draw step. Temple of Silence is where... She will begin. Looks like Hero's Downfall is going to stay on top. Gould will take a draw. Another Elvish Mystic. Nykthos in hand, too. Nykthos looks like it'll be land number two. Here is Deathmiss Raptor number one. Zarin with a Fleece main line. Sylvan Carry out at the draw. Doesn't look like Michael has a payoff card yet. Here comes the Raptor. Maybe it's time for a Courser. Also has the option of playing Elvis Mystic and Carry Added. I'm going to go with Courser. Take a look at the top card. It's a Forest. That'll trigger the Courser. Gain life up to 21. This will allow Gould to actually cast the Elvis Mystic too. And you see a Nykthos on top of the deck. That'll be the draw step for next turn as we head back Zaring's way. Courser crew fix the draw for her. There's a copy of Manic Influence. Here's Hero's Downfall. That'll take care of the Courser. This will allow Fleece Main Line to attack. Pass that turn back. Gold will draw his Nykthos. We saw that earlier. But as you mentioned, no payoff card. Doesn't look to be. Just mana, a raptor that you see in play, and I believe a hornet nest. Yep. Carry added Nykthos. Those are the other cards in hand. Temple of Abandon, too. Temple of Abandon can help to find a payoff card. Here's an attack for three. There's Hornet Nest. Here's Carry Added. There's Temple. Top card goes to the bottom. Gould's at the mercy of his draw step at this point. He has built some good defenses on the ground. That Hornet Nest is going to slow down Fleece Main Line, of course. Here's Courser. Top card to Fleece Main Line. Sansep Citadel will gain Zaring a life. We'll see what Gould can find on top of the deck. Another carry added. Not what the doctor ordered. Still, things are not too, too bad for Michael at this spot. He, you know, Natalia's not in a position really to attack or block for right now. But he's got to find a payoff card soon. Indeed. Last card in hand is just Nick, though. Pass the turn back over to Zarin. Fleece main line will be the draw. Temple of Plenty. Two triggers, of course, one for Scry, one for Courser. Tasker is on top of the deck. See if that's going to stay or not. See about 30 seconds left here. 
like Tasker will stay. Here's Anna Fenza. Pass the turn back over to Gould. I'm not that excited by Tassiger in the spot because I think that Natalia's removal spells are so powerful that that's all I'm really digging for. Well, Gould drew a goody. He's going to start by attacking with Deathmiss Raptor. So we're going to trade. And now he gets to go to the skies with Hornet Queen. Four insects will join. Drown in Sorrow has become pretty potent. Uh, yes, <laughs> seems <laughs> relatively important. It's a Temple of Malady on top of the deck. It looks like Zaring will be turn number zero. We will get confirmation on that. Step one is Temple of Malady. You get triggers, of course. Corsair and Scry, Siege Rhino on top. Might be wise to keep that there, as it looks like it's just going to be about life at this point. Michael's hitting for six a turn in the air, and the Sea Rhino pulls her above 12. So that amounts to three turns, which may be enough to couple a draw together in the worst case scenario. Yep. I think it is unlikely for Natalia to be able to actually win the game. Yeah, with Michael at 18, the only way that I could con conceive of it even happening is it drown it, basically drown in sorrow. And I, I don't think it's in Natalia's hand, and it's not the draw step next turn. There's a morph. Pass that turn back. It is turn number one. Arbor Kloss is the draw. Queen B, and the insects come in for six. So if Michael's turn one, right now he's okay. He can win this game on turn five on the board, assuming Natalia's doing nothing but casting a siege right now. Mm -hmm. Arbor Colossus will enter the battlefield. On Morph a Den Protector. Looks like it's time to get back to Hero's Downfall. Now, Hero's Downfall is bad news here for Michael as the Siege Rhino, plus killing the 2-2 Flyer, plus this point from the Corsair Crew Fix, et cetera, et cetera. It all, it all adds up It here. all adds up. Maybe Natalia can get a draw here. Temple of Silence gains a life up to seven. Top card goes to the bottom. We'll see what the top card is now from Corsair. It's a hero's downfall. Looks like it might be rhino time. And it is. So this is all about just keeping head above water. Mm-hmm. Zarin will gain a little bit of life. Gould will lose some. I don't think there are any good attacks to be had. Here. No, I, I think that she may be looking, is it worth taking a point of damage to cast a Fleecebane Lion? I think the answer is no, because she can easily chump block on the ground for the next two turns. But taking a point of damage is, makes the, the math with the Hornets just getting hit with very, very sensitive. I think she's just got to say go. I don't think there's a, a lot to be gleaned by uh, tapping this, this mana confluence here. She's just going to pass the turn back. Turn three. Temple of Abandon the draw here for Gould. So the eligible attackers he has on the battlefield now are the only ones he's going to have for the rest of the yeah. game. You know, like a card like a Zenigo Seder token is not going to matter. She, again, Natalia is not going to lose on the ground. It's just going to be to the Hornets. In for six. Looks like Zaring is going to fall down to three. Heroes downfall the draw. Top card of the deck is a temple. And I think two downfalls plus a land off the courser should be enough for a draw. Looks like there is enough black mana out there where mana confluence doesn't work its way into things. Top card going to go to the bottom. As long as she remembers that courser trigger, and it looks like she has up to four. All right, modern players, welcome. Yeah, I think we're looking at a draw. I think so. Pass the turn back. Downfalls at the ready. Gould will draw a card. Or my friend Anthony. Comes and checks in with you. 
This is the final turn of extra turns. That's a temple of a band. I think he knows it too. Here come the Hornets, Arbor Colossus. That wants some. Sure, why not? Might as well. It's the last turn. <laughs> Two downfalls. That'll get you down to one. I would block that Arbor Colossus. That is my that is my tip of the day, and it's going to be a draw here between Natalia Zaring and Michael Gold to start things off after an impressive comeback in game number two. A draw is actually kind of ideal, truthfully, in this matchup: Alexander uh, versus Green Red Devotion. Uh, Natalia, Natalia worked hard for that draw. Yeah, because yeah. 